All right. Hey, I'm Pete with Moscow Moto. I'm getting ready to take off tomorrow for a month-long trip in West Africa. I'm going to do a loop uh, starting in Ghana and then going through some combination of Togo and Benin and um, Ivory Coast. And it's kind of an interesting trip um, because I don't really know what kind of motorcycle I'm going to be on. Uh, I'm going to buy a bike when I get there, some kind of local, probably small displacement bike, maybe 150, 200 cc's. I don't really know what the mix of pavement and dirt's going to be. I don't really know how much I'm going to be camping versus staying in hotels, and I don't really know what kind of bike I'm going to be on. So it's sort of an interesting um, packing challenge, and I've done a, a bunch of these trips uh, like this one, um, and so I, I just thought I'd share kind of what I'm taking. I have a couple tricks that have worked for me in the past. I'm just going to kind of walk through my packing stuff. I'm taking a Reckless 80 bag because that's our most versatile uh, bag system that you can just kind of toss over any any bike and with 80 liters plus the expansion capacity it can kind of expand and contract uh, over the course of the trip. So all this gear should fit in there no problem. So I'm just going to kind of start uh, walking through the stuff I'm taking with me. So um, I mentioned that I don't really know how much I'm going to be camping. Uh, so um, I'm not taking like a fully plush camping setup. I'm taking kind of just the bare minimum um, amount of stuff. And my experience with camping in a lot of these countries has been, has been that a lot of times I think I'm going to go and camp a lot, but then when I actually get there, the countries are so settled that it's actually, and the hotels are so cheap that I actually end up staying in hotels. But um, a lot of times there are situations where I'm really happy to have my camping gear even though I don't end up using it because I get into a situation where it's, it's getting late at night or I had an accident, some issue with a bike, like a breakdown or something like that, and uh, it's just really comforting to know that I can stop anywhere and sleep. And sometimes that gives me the confidence to keep charging and get to the next town. Um, and it makes the whole experience a lot less stressful, just knowing that I could stop anywhere, pull off and camp behind a bush and be just fine. Um, so that's, that's kind of the intent for camping here. I, here I'm sure I'll camp at least a few nights on purpose, but uh, mainly I bring it just for uh, emergency use in case something goes wrong. So to that end, uh, for food, um, I'm taking enough for uh, kind of just to get me through a night and a morning um, of unanticipated camping. So if I'm, if I'm actually planning to camp, I'll go grocery shopping and get some like proper food and take it with. But if the bike breaks down and it's getting late and I decide to camp, I like to know I have enough food so I'm not just going to be super hungry. So I'm taking a can of uh, chicken and then uh, four oatmeal packs, a uh, bag of peanuts, and uh, a bunch of little things of peanut butter. I don't have anything to put this on, I'll just eat it right out of the bag. You know, it's calories, it's delicious. Maybe I'll mix it with oatmeal, kind of makes a meal. Um, and this is stuff that I don't even really have to have a fire. I'm not, get, not taking a camp stove, so um, even without a fire, I should be able to turn most of this into something edible. So um, that's why I chose those particular entrees. I got a little cup and a lighter, little uh, fork and knife combo, and then some mayonnaise and mustard packs to make the chicken taste a little better. And then I got a whole bunch of uh, Starbucks Vias. So I take those things with me just to drink, um, not just when I'm camping, but in the morning, uh, because I can't always count on finding a good cup of coffee um, over there. So that's what I've got in terms of food. That's just designed to get me through one night and one morning of emergency camping. And hopefully I'll come back with this food. I won't even use it for the whole trip. Hopefully it'll just be in the bottom of my bag. It's my little security blanket. If I need it, it's there. If I don't, I'll just bring it home and eat it when I get back. Um, for electronics, uh, what I've got is a, um, Delorme uh, inReach. This is a satellite um, uh, locator beacon kind of thing, so I can send text messages. It's better, from, from my opinion, better than a spot because, like a spot, you just hit the rescue button if something goes wrong. And then I was in that situation once, and I can tell you when you're actually like injured on the side of the road and there's nobody around, and you hit that button, and you have no way to communicate with the people on the other end of the button, so you don't really know if they're coming or not. Whereas with this thing, you can actually send satellite text messages, so. That's a huge advantage, that's why I take the inReach. Um, this is like kind of an extravagance here. This is a proper little jam box, it's waterproof. Um, it's got really good sound, and I'm just taking that because I just like to have good music. Um, but the other cool thing about this one is that it's got a, char a, a charging uh, connector on the back, so I can actually charge my cell phone off of it. So uh, my cell phone's a pretty important part of the trip. Uh, it's my primary communication device. Uh, so this gives me the ability to recharge it if I don't have wall power. So. I'm taking this, it's a big, heavy thing, but uh, I think it'll pay off. <clears throat> and then um, for, I, I gotta keep up with work and stuff, you know, I'm gonna be gone for a month. Moscow's got a lot going on right now, so I can't be totally without a computer. So I've just got this little mini laptop here, uh, little HP uh, mini laptop, works great. I have pretty much all my stuff in the cloud, so I can access it and uh, keep up on emails and stuff like that. Um, and then I've also got my journal. You know, I like to write, and it's also good to have a notebook just for like taking directions and stuff like that. And then um, I've got a Kindle, 
and this has all my books on it just for like reading pleasure and stuff like that and then if I want to download like a guidebook for one of the countries or something like that I can put that in here too it's just a whole lot more compact and the battery on this thing lasts for weeks um, it's a lot more compact than bringing individual books <clears throat> and then uh, in terms of like cables and connectors and chargers and stuff obviously I got a headlamp I got some headphones it's a bunch of little doodads in here that don't really need a uh, description. Little camera tripod. This thing's handy because I can like wrap it around a tree branch or my handlebars or whatever. It's a lot more compact than bringing a real uh, full-on tripod. For power, uh, I take this universal power adapter. This thing will take any kind of plug and connect to any kind of plug. It's got all the different international plug variations here from Europe and all over the world. So it's sort of everything in one because I'll be crossing several borders and. Some of these countries might have different um, uh, power plug setups, so it's nice to have one adapter that just kind of does everything. So I take that, and then what I found, you know, especially for the kind of divey uh, hotels I usually stay in, a lot of times they, they have like only one power outlet on the wall, and if I've got like a phone and some other stuff I want to recharge, and it's usually like really awkwardly situated, it's not necessarily right next to the bed. So this is another little extravagance. I always take a, a, a extension cord and it's got four outlets on it so I can charge a couple different things um, and it just means that I can actually be like on my phone in the morning or something like that and have it be plugged in or at night because sometimes the plug is like even out in the hallway it's not anywhere convenient to, to charge stuff so I take that and I also take a um, somewhere in here I've got a three prong to two prong adapter because uh, that's another thing uh, this extension cord only has the two slots and uh, laptops have a three prong connector there and so I've been in a lot of situations where uh, I can't find an outlet for this. So I always take this little two-prong to three-prong adapter as well. So that's pretty much it. I just got a couple batteries. I got a P38 can opener. That's really good with the food stuff. I got a highlighter. It's good for maps. That's it. Uh, and my cell phone. Uh, this is an iPhone 6. And um, on my cell phone, I bought this unlocked. So I can take this to, it's not like, you know, if you buy through AT&T or you buy through Sprint, when you go overseas, you can't use your phone, um, so you have to get it unlocked. This phone I just bought at full retail because it's unlocked, and then I can just go to whatever country I'm in. I pull out the SIM card that I have with a U.S. carrier, put in a SIM card for a Ghana carrier, for a Togo carrier, for an Ivory Coast carrier, and I have a local cell phone with you know usually really cheap data, and so I can get emails and use my GPS and stuff like that on the phone. I'm not taking a GPS on this trip because the phone's just so good, and I don't have a local SIM card. I can download maps for online use. The GPS on the phone still works. I have the ability to recharge the phone off this uh, battery pack, so the phone is my GPS um, in addition to uh, being a, a phone, so I don't take a separate GPS. Um, for documents, uh, I've got uh, a couple things here. Um, I've got maps for Ivory Coast and Ghana. I bought these ahead of time. A lot of times when I get to a country, I can find better maps there, like just at a gas station, but I can't always count on that. So I have like a little security in showing up with a couple of my own maps. Um, if I can find better maps when I get there, I'll totally uh, get those and use those, but if I can't, at least I know I have some some basic map for getting around. Um, and then uh, this is the uh, map pocket off the uh, Reckless 80. This thing's really handy for documents. You know, I'll throw this in my carry-on when I'm flying, and then uh, when I um, get there, I'll put it back on the on the Reckless 80. Um, carry my documents that way. I've got my passport with visas. I've got my yellow fever uh, certificate for my immunization. Um, some business cards, uh, and uh, I've got uh, extra passport photos because pretty much like every border, you got to have uh, a couple of extra passport photos in order to get admitted to the country. And so it's just so much easier to have them beforehand. Otherwise, like it's this little hectic scene of like running around trying to find someone to do it, and they overcharge you and all this stuff. So I always fly with a couple extra passport photos, and travel insurance. Uh, I always go with travel insurance. When I had a big crash in Honduras. Uh, a couple of years ago, this saved me uh, almost 190000 in medical bills. So my policy for this trip cost um, $36 to cover me for a month of riding a motorcycle in West Africa. And that's including like medevac and um, you know up to $100,000 in uh, medevac and $50,000 for um, accidents and stuff like that. So for me, this is just a real obvious to, to buy this um, because these trips have like a certain amount of risk involved. <laughs> and then uh, for uh, motorcycle stuff, I've got my tool roll. You know, this has all my the tools that fit my KTM here in the States. Unfortunately, what I found in the past is that those don't always turn out to be the right tools uh, for the bikes that um, I get when I go over there because they're like small displace displacement bikes and they might have different uh, nut sizes and stuff like that. So when I get there and I actually figure out what kind of bike I'm going to buy, 
Um, I'll uh, do a quick scan of the bike, see which of these tools are applicable, which ones aren't, and then I'll go down to the local market and uh, and buy some additional um, buy some additional tools that suit the bike. Uh, there are a couple things in here, like I always take patches um, because sometimes it's really hard to find good quality tube patches over there, uh, and so um, I like to always have some patches. If I can find good patches over there, I'll buy them. But a lot of times the patches are just so cruddy. Um, it's better to come with patches from the U.S. And then I've uh, always got a couple uh, tire irons. Again, the tire irons that we use here in the States are usually a lot better than what I can find in developing countries, just a lot sturdier, so I bring my own. Um, then I take an uh, air pump. I do a hand pump, not a power pump. Obviously, the bike I'm on is not going to have an ability to charge a battery or to um, have a cigarette lighter adapter or anything like that, so a hand pump is just a lot more versatile and lighter. Take some zip ties, take my knife. And then uh, I take uh, a tow rope as well. I got a buddy who's gonna meet me about a week into the trip, so we'll have two bikes. And uh, pretty much every one of these trips I've ever done, there's been some towing involved at some point in the journey. So I got a nice sturdy tow rope. I tie loops in the end of it like this, so I can just loop it around one bike. And then I've got this uh, carabiner for uh, quick release. So um, if we're towing, we can coast downhill and then, uh, and then tow uphill and then coast downhill and tow uphill. It's easier than like untying knots and stuff like that. So I'm taking a proper tow rope. Like I said, pretty much every one of these trips, uh, there's been some towing involved. So uh, in terms of riding gear, uh, because this is like a small displacement moto trip, uh, I'm taking my own helmet, um, but I'm not taking a bunch of protective gear. I'm gonna be riding a Carhartts. Um, so I've got just like a regular old set of uh, double knee, double front uh, Carhartt pants for riding. And then uh, a couple of jogging shirts. I take two of them. I usually get really sweaty. And so with two of them, I can wash one in the hotel sink at night and then uh, wear the other one and just kind of trade them back and forth like that. So I've always got one that's uh, being washed and one that I'm actually wearing. I take a mesh jersey just to keep the sun off my arms. The air blows right through this thing. Um, take a couple of Under Armour riding shorts, same principle. I got two of them. This fabric washes really easily in the sink and dries really fast. So uh, that's what I've got for that. A pair of riding gloves. And then for my uh, normal clothes, I'm doing uh, one pair of jeans, clean pants. So I've got the Carhartts are like my dirty pants. These pants are for like going out to bars, going out to nightclubs, stuff like that, going out to get dinner. Uh, same principle with shorts. I've got kind of a clean pair and a dirty pair, two pairs and one set of swim trunks. Taking uh, four pairs of boxers, probably about six, seven pairs of socks. I take one collared shirt, again, just for a um, short sleeve collared shirt for like going out and stuff like that. Um, and then I've got three t-shirts here as well. So uh, that's it for clothes. Take a pair of flip-flops to go with shorts and at the beach. And then I take a pair of uh, pack shoes. So I'm going to be riding in uh, these shoes, which are just like kind of hiking, um, uh, standard hiking shoes. And then uh, sometimes if it rains, like I'll get soaking wet. And so when I get back at night, it's nice to have a pair of dry shoes to put on. And these things, if I wash them off a little bit, even though they're just like these little slippers, they look like normal shoes. So, um, and they don't take up much space. They pack tiny. So that's what I take for extra shoes. Take a little pack towel. This is an old school pack towel. I just kind of cut it into a uh, half or like a third, so it's even smaller. So that's my towel. A lot of times the rooms I get, you know, for a couple bucks a night, they don't have towels, so it's good to have your own. Uh, and then in these two stuff sacks here, one of these is rain gear and the other is warm gear. So we're not, this is a pretty warm climate trip. I don't think we're gonna be going up that much in ter terms of altitude or anything like that, so I'm not too concerned about being in real cold temperatures, but there are those times, especially if it's been raining and you're riding all day where you kind of get a chill. So I'm taking this little puffy and then uh, I've got like a proper, a proper hoodie in there as well. And these things are just so bulky that uh, I find it helpful to, to use a stuff sack with them. And then for uh, rain gear, because I'm not taking real riding gear on this trip, I'm just riding in normal uh, Carhartt pants. I'm taking some uh, just real light duty rain gear. I've got a uh, the kind rain jacket. It's like a, this is actually my mountain biking jacket, and then a pair of uh, single layer waterproof breathable basic rain pants like that. So if it really starts raining, I'll put this stuff over my car hearts and you know stay sort of slightly drier than I would otherwise. Um, let's see, let's look at, uh, yeah, in terms of like 
toiletries and toothbrush and stuff like that I got here, shaver. I always uh, roll around with toilet paper because you just can't count on um, actually finding toilet paper everywhere you want to go to the bathroom. A lot of places don't have it. I take the little tube out of the middle so it packs down a little tighter and I'll put that in a Ziploc baggie. It's handy to always have a roll of toilet paper. Uh, and um, in terms of medications, I'm going to take Malarone on this trip for malaria. So that's a daily pill. Uh, and then I've got an assortment of different things that are mostly designed to either help you go to the bathroom or stop you from going to the bathroom, depending on what your uh, objective is. I take Imodium with me. I always take a couple doses of Cipro. This stuff's really easy to get over there too. Like it's an antibiotic, so if you get the really bad traveler's you know illness or whatever, you start getting a fever. Um, this stuff will fix it up like that, so you can get back on the road. I've lost a lot of time to those kind of foodborne illnesses, so I don't mess around. I take Cipro right away if I start getting sick. Other people feel differently about it, but uh, that's my philosophy. I'm taking sun cream, hydrocortisone, toothbrush and toothpaste, soap. Again, can't always count on the hotels having soap. Earplugs for noisy rooms. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm taking some camping gear on this trip, but it's like pretty minimalist because it's really designed for uh, mostly for emergency use, although I'm sure we'll camp a couple nights on purpose. But um, on this trip, I'm taking, uh, this is just the rain fly in my tent. So I'm not taking the full tent because uh, it cuts down on space and weight a lot to just take the rain fly. I've got this in a compression sack and actually there's still quite a bit of extra space in this sack so I'll probably add some clothes to the sack too to take full advantage of it. But this is a rain fly for uh, a two man tent so I got a buddy coming with me on this trip. Um, and then I just take the rain fly and the poles and I set it up without the main body of the tent. So. Um, and when it's set up that way, it's really large because it's got two big vestibules on it. And without the, the center part of the tent, it ends up being an enormous amount of space for two guys to take all their gear and other stuff inside. So, um, but because I don't have the main body of the tent, uh, I'm also taking a mosquito net. So this, this uh, compression sack has both a mosquito net and my warm weather sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is a VOD 100, a uh, pretty economical bag to get. Fits in a really small stuff sack, and that's great for this kind of emergency use. Comes with the stuff sack, too. And in there I've got a uh, travel mosquito net. So this thing comes in handy sometimes too out in the countryside if the, you're staying in like just a real cheapo room and they don't have uh, mosquito nets. You know mosquitoes are kind of a big deal in parts of Africa because they carry malaria. So it's not just a matter of like wanting to avoid getting itchy, uh, being all itchy. It's also a matter of like not catching malaria. So having a mosquito net can be handy. Most hotels like decent hotels or places in the city they'll have them. But out in the countryside a lot of times they won't have them. So I take a mosquito net anyway. So um, this thing, I can just dangle it from the inside of the rain fly, and uh, it basically is like having a tent, keeps the bugs out, stuff like that. Um, then I've got this uh, sleeping bag. You can see how small this would pack if, um, if I didn't have that mosquito net in there. This thing gets really tiny. Um, and then I've got my uh, thermal rest here as well. So uh, this is a Neo Air. This thing gets pretty small. Uh, as thermal rest go, I wish it got smaller, but uh, it's actually the largest piece of camping equipment I'm taking with me but um, certainly um, makes camping a little more appealing to have one of these. So uh, that's what I'm taking in terms of camping gear. And then uh, let's take a look at the bags. So uh, what we've got here is a uh, Reckless 80. This is our 2016 Reckless 80. Um, and uh, there are a couple of unique things here. On the um, bag itself, this is a prototype, but uh, this bag actually splits into three pieces. So uh, I, what I'm going to do uh, for traveling, I have this big duffel that I've taken on a bunch of trips, and I kind of I'm going to take that Reckless 80 apart, and it and all my other gear is going to go into this duffel on the flight, um, and then when I get where I'm going, this duffel uh, I'll leave it at a hotel or something like that, pick it up at the end of the trip, and use it for flying home. Um, I'm going to take the Reckless apart into three pieces, put it in the bag. I've got uh, two small Molly pouches that fit on the legs. I've got one large Molly pouch that fits on top of the beaver tail. And then the uh, map pocket that's got all my documents connects to these two Velcro strips on the inside of the beaver tail. Uh, I don't know what kind of bike I'm going to be on, so I'm taking a Reckless 80 hardware kit. Um, it's got an exhaust heat shield in it and a couple of brackets in case the bike doesn't have anything to attach the Reckless to on the back. I'll just bolt the brackets on there. Got the uh, two leg bags and then uh, one of our 20 liter dry sacks. So this thing I'll use to put my shoes in, inside my bags, because they get like dirty and wet and stuff like that. And then I'll use it for dirty socks, dirty underwear, sweaty stuff, things that I don't really want, like, uh, you know, kind of uh, being up next to my clean clothes. Um, and so then when I don't need it, it just packs down real small, and I can just kind of tuck it away into a pocket. And then as I get more and more dirty clothes, it'll sort of fill up, and then I'll take it and get the clothes cleaned and then tuck it away again. 
Um, and then last, this is the center bag. This is actually a prototype of the new uh, center bag, the Stinger um, 22 uh, tail bag. And this thing has backpack straps on the back. And so this is going to be my carry-on when I fly. So I'll check the uh, I'll check the duffel with the reckless and all my gear, and then I'll take this and my helmet on the flight. Um, and so it's got these real convenient backpack straps and plenty of space. So this will have like my computer and my Kindle and stuff like that. Maybe uh, change of clothes just in case my bags get lost for a couple of days, um, and real convenient. And then when I get there, I'll just uh, repack everything into the reckless, throw it over a bike, and off we go. Uh, this is the, the new uh, Reckless 80, and you can see one of the differences with this is that it splits into three pieces. See these screws here are holding the two leg pieces into the center harness, and one of the, we did that for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, one of the reasons is that you can take it apart and fly with it a lot easier than you could with the old one. So I'm just, uh, I've already taken a couple screws out here. This is a prototype, not the final bag, so the holes are a little rough, but you can kind of see um, this is the process of taking it apart. Each side has five screws and bolts and um, so I'm just uh, disassembling it and then when I get over to uh, Ghana I'll put it back together. <clears throat> All right so this is what the Reckless 80 looks like with its three uh, pieces and um, to pack it up for travel I'm just going to take the legs compress them down like this take the other leg the same thing put it opposite like that and then put the beaver tail over the top. There you go, and that's what the Reckless 80 looks like, all packed up and uh, ready to fly. So I'm going to take this and put it into um, a duffel. And then uh, go ahead and put all my other stuff in there, and I'm um, ready to fly. And this is the Reckless 80 with all my stuff for Africa all packed up here. So you can see I've got this. This is the, the Stinger 22 tail bag prototype and uh, that fits in the back of the Reckless 80 with its backpack strap. So this thing's ready to go as carry-on. It's got my laptop and Kindle and jacket, change of clothes, stuff like that. And then here, this is the big duffel that's got all my riding gear, all my uh, camping gear and equipment, and the Reckless 80 itself. And um, I'm going to go ahead and weigh it because there's a 50 pound limit for international flights. And this bag is weighing in at about 51, 52 pounds, so it's really borderline. There's a pretty good chance they'll let me um, take this on the plane. But uh, if they don't, I can either, I will probably um, just take something heavy out of it and take that with me on the plane. But the other alternative um, with this system, if you're a little bit overweight, is that because you've got all the component bags, inside if you want uh, I can pull out one of these bags and just check it separately um, or the, uh, the dry sack or something like that just check it separately and get the bag back down underweight so this is what it looks like inside you can see the reckless 80 tucked down there at the bottom I've got my clothes camping gear various other stuff stuffed in there and uh, that's all my stuff so I'm all packed up head into the airport tomorrow